Hey everyone, welcome back to the new lecture with ISO IEC 1705-2017 edition and technical records. What are technical records? These are the records you should have to prove the results to the customer, to give him confidence. If the customer has any complaint about the results or request any clarification to his results, you will have all information or data to clarify this in a simple way to him to prove the results and to prove that your results are valid. So, technical records shall include sufficient information or data to clarify the results to the customer in a simple way. And that include identification of factors affecting the measurement results. When you will quantify measurement uncertainty, you will identify all factors affecting the measurement results. Then you will add this result that you will get, which is measurement uncertainty, which include all factors affecting the measurement results, you will add this to the final results. So in the final report, you will have final results plus minus measurement uncertainty. And measurement uncertainty consider as all factors affecting the measurement results. So identification of factors affecting the measurement results and its associated measurement uncertainty. And also the lab shall enable a repetition of the lab activity with the results closed to the original. During your validation or verification, you will make repeatability, replicate analysis of sample spiked with known concentration of your target analytes. And if you got low standard deviation, that means your results of replicates are closed together and to the original. And if you got high standard deviation, that means your results are far from each other. So your validation or verification report also are a technical records. And during routine analysis, you will prepare quality control samples with every sequence. From these quality control samples, you can prepare also duplicates. Duplicate samples spiked with non-concentration, spike sample, and you can make this sample two times, duplicate. And your results should be closed together. And that will be also proved to the customer. So this is a technical record beside the quality control samples. And in all of your technical records, you shall include the data and identity of the responsible person for each lab activity. So this will be from your technical records. Validation or verification report, quality control samples that you will run with every sequence, from these quality control samples, as I explained before also, blank sample, spike sample to assess the efficiency of the method, duplicate also for the spike to prove the results, calibration, your calibration with acceptance range, verification also with acceptance range, control chart also is very important. Also in the final report, final report, you will find results plus minus measurement uncertainty. Measurement uncertainty, all factors affecting the measurement results. And you will have to prove these results, you will have the chromatogram on the instrument. And also, any calculations that you may do shall be available all time. And also, and in, with each technical record, the initial for the responsible person. So you shall have completed and sufficient technical records to provide evidence to the customer that you meet the requirement of this document, other international guidelines, and also meet the customer requirement. But if you have sufficient technical records and you did any amendment to any of these technical records, you shall make it in such a way that you can track to the original observation or original results. So the lab shall ensure that amendments to the technical records can be tracked to the previous version or to the original observation, both the original and amending that shall be retained, including the date of alteration and the personal responsible for alteration. So if you did mistakes or changes to any of your records, the standard allow you to do this to make changes, but it should be done in such a way that you can track it to the original 
observation or original data. And how to do this? If you have paper records, you don't have electronic records, you have only paper records, and you got this result. But you found that this result is incorrect. You should cross it out and you add your initial and the date also, because now date should be included. In 2005 edition was not required, the date of alteration was not required, but now it should be included, the date should be included also. But in case of electronic records, the lab shall have a system allow you to do this tracking. As example, like in PDF, if you want to make any change in the PDF or to write any note in PDF, and you got this result 2.15 and you write in the system 2.15 but you found that this result was incorrect in this case the system shall allow you to do this to write this sentence that this result was incorrect data should be 2.05 as example plus initial you can write your initial and date of alteration so now you follow the standard you have the original and the amended data and also the date of alteration and the responsible person who did this alteration so the main changes that i found here from the 2005 edition 413 to this point handling and recording of mistakes and errors have been updated this clause Crossing out and initiating of mistakes have been updated, erased and updated also. Now, date of alteration also shall be included. And requirements for technical records will be explained again in 841 control of records. And also now we have 76 evaluation of measurement uncertainty. And here I will not explain in details how to quantify measurement uncertainty because I explained that before in method, method validation course. But here we have just some rules about evaluation of measurement uncertainty. First rule, lab shall identify all contributions to measurement uncertainty, including sampling using appropriate methods. To quantify measurement uncertainty, you shall identify all factors affecting the measurement results from analysis and also for sampling. And sampling now, you add it to this addition. You shall quantify also measurement uncertainty due to sampling as for analysis, and most of them will be combined together to get combined uncertainty, and then you will calculate expanded uncertainty. So, sampling uncertainty shall be quantified, and that's also explained before in method validation course and as you know also if you did calibration for any of you of your equipments with any calibration laboratory you will get a certificate including measurement uncertainty so calibration lab for lab performing calibration or calibration laboratories measurement uncertainty shall be evaluated for all calibrations so you will get this measurement uncertainty with each certificate so they shall evaluate measurement uncertainty for all calibrated equipments and also very important point there is no need to evaluate measurement uncertainty for each result for the verified methods you don't need to quantify measurement uncertainty for each results you will get but you need only to quantify measurement uncertainty during your validation or verification but after that to get any results, you don't need again to quantify measurement uncertainty. But you will add the measurement uncertainty that you got during validation or verification to the final results. So, and this is new point added also to this edition. That was the end of our lecture for today. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.